We'll turn our attention to uh, the advertising rules. We won't go over those these in huge detail, but I want to make sure everybody is aware of them. The advertising rules are at RPC 7.1 through 7.6. They deal with not only advertising, but also direct solicitation of potential clients. And they are, uh, again, continuing on the basic theme. You're not supposed to make false or misleading communications. Uh, whether you're in so if you're in social media, you don't you don't get to post things like, you know, I just want a fifty million dollar verdict if that's in fact not the case. You don't get to make representations about your abilities, your knowledge, your skills that are not true. And while it's easy to say, oh well, I'm not gonna do that anyways. Sometimes the lines are not all that clear, and the temptation to make ourselves appear good in our efforts at advertising, or be it through traditional media or social media, um, are kind of hard to resist. Please resist them. It will get you in trouble if you don't. 7.2 addresses advertising through... Uh, written, recorded, or electronic means of communication, including public media. So this is broad. This, this arguably encompasses your social media. It arguably might encompass your press conferences on behalf of your client if you start puffing yourself up too much. And we've seen some examples in the last year of lawyers who are currently busy trying to save their licenses because they kind of over puffed themselves in some of their social media or or CNN or CNN uh, or uh, uh. or any or other time anybody stuck a microphone in their face <laughs> you don't want to be that person you want to keep yourself you want the object of doing presenting ourselves to the public presenting ourselves in media is to look good maybe make good for our clients it's not to violate the rules 7.3 talks about direct solicitation of clients. It's not, it's not obvious that this means in media or social media, but it needs to be, uh, it could apply to your social media or your efforts through social media to make contact with people who might potentially engage you, and you want to be aware of what it says. The basic rule is, again, tell the truth. And rather than go through each one of these things, the, it's not my job to, to read these to you. But you need to be aware of these rules. You need to be cognizant of them and their effect on whatever you do. At this point, I'm going to turn the uh, presentation over to Anita, who's going to talk about one of the opinions of the uh, Committee on Professional Responsibility and Conduct of the State Bar. I'm happy to say that this opinion was published before I joined, and therefore, if you don't like it, you can't blame me. <laughs> thank you, Joel, for going over the rules. And hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, before I get into the opinion, uh, I must say, during my time at the State Bar, um, I was there for about seven years, I didn't have, I never prosecuted a case um, that involved uh, violation of any of these rules. I did have many cases where they were investigated, not to say that there were no cases that were prosecuted involving these rules. Um, and the ones that I investigated that were a violation of the former one 400, um, many of the attorneys were personal injury attorneys. Mm. Uh, and um, and I feel like the need to advertise about their cases, it's more in that arena. And we would send a lot of warning letters, um, conditional warning letters, asking the attorney, you need to fix this advertisement. And their advertisements, not necessarily social media. Um, maybe it wasn't that popular. I mean, social media has been around for a long time, but um, it's probably more popular now than the last seven years. Uh, so getting into this opinion. Um, it's formal opinion number 2012-186. The issue 
in this opinion is, under what circumstances would an attorney's postings on social media be subject to professional responsibility rules and standards? Uh, the opinion does look at different scenarios, and we'll quickly go through those scenarios because it'll be helpful. They're examples. Um, and once again, keep in mind it's no longer 1 400, it's 7.1 and 2 and 3. Now, considering the rule, uh, what you want to ask yourself is Is your post considered a communication? Your tweet, your Facebook status. Um, and the way we figure this out is you ask yourself Does your post concern the availability? for professional employment. Just that question is going to come on repeat. Does the post concern the availability for professional employment? Um, let's look at the examples provided by the opinion. They gave about five. They're pretty quick um, and very relevant to what I see, at least on social media. I see so many friends that are attorneys post status messages on Facebook about their, um, when I'll refer to PI again, PI cases. And I'd say 85% of the time, it's in violation of the rules. I've even reached out to a couple of friends. I'm like, hey, you know, you might want to change this. And of course, they have an argument against it. No, I don't think so. I'm all right. So uh, I'm no snitch. I'm not going to do anything <laughs> about it. Um, but let's look at these examples. So one example they look at is a post that would say, Case finally over, unanimous verdict, celebrating tonight. Now, is this post a communication? Um, and in this opinion, they said, no. Mm. This post, it's not a message or offer concerning the availability for professional employment. All it's saying is the case is over and we're celebrating tonight. It's, it's not an offer saying, call my office, we can do the same for you or anything like that. That would change the whole game if you added something like that. Next example, another great victory in court today. Before we go on, yes. if it were considered a communication, would it be a violation of one of the rules? Not necessarily. So you, well, we'll get into that. Okay. Another great victory in court today. My client is delighted. Who wants to be next? Mm -hmm. That's a little different than the first one. Uh, who wants to be next? Flag goes up. Uh, it meets the definition of communication because it suggests availability of professional employment. Um, the other issues up front is they considered it a uh, testimonial, um, and also that it's it's a guarantee or a warranty or prediction about results of a case. Now, if you do do that, then you do have to indicate that it's an advertisement. Um, and put a disclaimer. You can't just leave it as is. So to answer his question, you could have such a communication, but you have to make it clear that it's an advertisement. Um, and many people do not do that. They do not do that. So if you're ever in a situation where it's vague, what this opinion suggests and State Bar would suggest is fix it. Do something that it's, so it's not vague. You just don't want trouble. You really don't. Um, it'll be a headache for you in the future. Uh, the next one. Won a million dollar verdict. Tell your friends to check out my website. Communication? It does qualify as a communication uh, because it's concerning the availability for professional employment. Um, won a million dollar verdict. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Larry H. Parker got me $2 million, and you don't really see those commercials anymore. You see commercials for Larry H. Parker, but it's not the same. Because mm -hmm. uh, you can't do that um, unless, you know, you do say this is an advertisement, have your disclaimer, so on and so forth. Um, moving on to one, another personal injury case. Call me for a free consultation. Is this a communication? Yes, it is. Uh, even though it says free consultation, it's with the potential of gaining that client where they actually hire you uh, after the consultation. Um, it qualifies, and you need that little advertisement 
writing to go right under it. Um, the last one, just published an article on wage and hour breaks. Let me know if you would like a copy. That is safe. It's good to go. It's not asking for anyone to contact the attorney for future employment uh, at all. Um, so, you know, it's, once again, just be very careful with your posts, your tweets, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. Um, it's very tempting to put a lot of information in the post to try to gain a client or relay that information out. But if you do, if it is a communication pursuant to the rule, just make sure it complies with the rule in that you indicate that it's an advertisement. 